Hi, so today I wanted to film a video called A Eulogy for Pepe. Uh, Pepe is a little green cartoon frog that you see online, and he's ever since 2004, 2005, he has shown up in multiple comic strips, and in the late 2000s, he became popular on 4chan and other meme websites, uh, particularly with this one comic strip where he's somebody notices they're walking by a stall, and he is pissing with his pants pulled all the way down, and they go, why are you doing that? And he goes, feels good, man. And Pepe is he's kind of like Clay. He's been used for, for all different types of memes to express all different types of things. When you're sad, when you're happy, when you're feeling smug, when something bad happens, when something great happens, like all different kinds, there, there are so many different inter, uh, memes using Pepe. And over the past year and a half, there's a very, 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 very small percentage, very small percentage of the people that enjoy and love Pepe the Frog for who he is, that have been using him in pictures where he is dressed up in an SS uniform saying Hitler did nothing wrong or where he's doing terribly racist shit and a lot of people have said that oh this is terrible that frog is a hate symbol because that happened and I want to point out why I think this is incredibly stupid narrow-minded and ridiculous and why above all when you start saying shit like that when you start saying shit like that you are letting the the people who are responsible for this troll you in ways that you never imagined so Let's just think back to any other type of cartoon. So let's say Garfield. I think Garfield came out in like late 70s, early 80s. So Garfield has been around for a long, long time, like 30, 40 years, right? He's been around for 30, 40 years. If from the day that Garfield came out, he was a Nazi. So from the first Garfield comic, he was in an SS uniform, and he was kicking somebody in the back of the head, like in American History X. We could reasonably say that Garfield was a hate symbol, or a racist, or a Nazi cat. However, if Garfield had been around for 30, 40 years, and then after 30, 40 years of just being a nice little funny cat, somebody decided to Photoshop him in an SS uniform that said Hitler did nothing wrong, you'd have to be pretty fucking stupid to say that Garfield was a, a Nazi cat. That would, that would be silly, that would be asinine. The individual who has the anti-Semitic tendencies would not be the cat, which is a JPEG, which is a not real object, not real item. It would be the person with that intent. It would be the person who made the photoshopped image of Garfield in an SS uniform saying Hitler did nothing wrong. But for some reason in our society where we refuse to give personal accountability or, person, uh, or personal responsibility, we, we refuse to stick it where it belongs, Rather than blame the human being that did that, let's blame the fucking JPEG. And this is the problem that I have, and this is why I would like to call this a eulogy for Pepe, because Pepe is not dead. Pepe is going to live on regardless of whether the person who made the cartoon decides that he needs to die just because this, that, and the other. So with Pepe, he had a good 10-year run of never being used in anything remotely racist. And then for a year, as I say, a small percentage, a small percentage of the people that enjoy Pepe decided to use him and all that stuff. And rather than, rather than call out the people who were doing that, we then decided, instead of doing that, we decided to call out the frog. We decided to call out the JPEG image, which... I mean, can you imagine if we, if, if we go down this road as a society? That's not okay. Because if we, go, if we start going down this path now, we are going to go down this path of incredible censorship, and then when does it end? So let's say the people that, that, were photo, let's say the people that are photoshopping Pepe as a racist, okay let's, say that they, okay, let's say that they realize that they have triggered you. And before we even get to the whole realization of triggering, let's, get, let's go to, to kind of where this started. As somebody who spent a lot of time on IRC in the late 90s and far too much time on 4chan in the early 2000s, I, can, I have a little bit of an idea of how this works. So firstly, many of the people who are, who are making these terrible, disgusting, racist, sexist, whatever memes, a lot of them are not racist. I'm not saying it's okay, let me be clear. I'm not saying that it's okay that they're doing it because I know that somebody's gonna jump cut right there and they're gonna edit and they're gonna end the sentence before I ended the sentence uh, and, and rage and misquote me because that's what media does. Uh, it's not saying it's okay, but what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm saying that to establish intent. Their intention is not to spread racist propaganda. Their intention is to make you rage, make you mad, and to trigger you to irrational behavior. If they, can, if they can trigger you to irrational behavior, then they get their rocks off. That's how the system works. Uh, these, these, these dark corners of IRC, the darker corners of 4chan, 
They are populated by the people who have their strings pulled, by the disenfranchised, by the fucked with. And at the end of an eight or a 10 or a 12 or a 14 hour day of being fucked with and having their strings pulled, they get their jollies off by pulling the strings of other people. And right now, they're pulling the strings of you by triggering you to irrational, impulsive behavior. Killing, for getting, uh, pushing and, and pressuring a content creator to kill their comic strip, to kill the character from their comic strip, just because they're using it in a way that you don't like, there have got to be people on 4chan that are, they, they are pissing themselves fucking laughing. They are, they are sitting in a pile of their own piss that they've created from laughing so hard at the fact that they were able to get a JPEG image of a fucking cartoon frog into the Anti-Defamation League's website as a hate symbol. They are laughing at you. They are laughing as hard as they can at your stupidity. And they are laughing even more that, that you actually are blaming the frog and not blaming them, the complete disconnect of personal accountability and responsibility that occurs here. They realize that just through the power of their trolling, again, 0.1% of the people that have enjoyed Pepe memes, this 0.1% of the people that have been trolling have been able to get the creator of Pepe to kill Pepe in the hopes that it would go away. So what you've done now, what you've done now by taking this shit seriously, you've done the worst thing you can do to a troll, which is give the troll power. And since you've given the troll power by not uh, uh, holding them accountable for, for what's occurred, but rather holding the poor little helpless cartoon frog accountable, is you've given them a motivation to say, how far can we go with this? Just what can we get, like how many different cartoon characters, how many different people can we get them to disassociate themselves with through this completely illogical, Lunacy. As I said, they're about trolling. They're about pulling your strings. They're about getting a reaction out of you that's irrational. So now that they see that they can get a cartoon frog of 10 years that has just been a happy little frog to get just torn away and turn into a hate symbol just because they're able to make a couple of racist memes about them, what's going to happen to everything else? What precedent does this set for Garfield? What precedent does this set for Dilbert? What precedent does this set for The Simpsons? What precedent does this set for Family Guy? What precedent does this set for, for Dogbert from Dilbert? I love Dogbert from Dilbert. Can you imagine if they killed off Dogbert from Dilbert and say you can't use him anymore because some fucks from 4chan decided that, that, that they were going to turn him into a racist meme? Who is safe? What cartoon character is safe? What card, like, what's next? Like, if they start photoshopping Snoopy, saying Hitler did nothing wrong, does that mean that Charlie Brown is now, uh, is, is now a symbol of hate? Does that mean that the Anti-Defamation League is going to say that we can no longer enjoy peanuts? Does that mean that the Charlie Brown Christmas special, that the Vince Guaraldi Trio music can no longer be traded at Christmas time? I like the Vince Guaraldi Trio. I like being able to listen to their music at Christmas time. And I don't want to live in a world where two or three or five years from now, everybody is so easily triggered by shit that they see on the internet that I'm not allowed to listen to that music. I could, I could see it right now. I could see it. And they're going to start photoshopping Snoopy. Then they're going to start pho uh, photoshopping Pigpen. Then they're going to start photoshopping Lucy and Charlie and all the SS uniforms. And then people are going to say, hate symbol, hate symbol. And then I'm going to be playing Charlie. Charlie Brown at my Christmas party and people are gonna say, are you a white nationalist? Are you a racist? Are you a Nazi? It's like, dude, no, I just like Charlie Brown. And it's, yeah, it's start, I want you to think about how this is sustainable. I want you to think about how this works long term. How can you apply this rule universally? Because if you can't apply the rule universally, then it doesn't work at all. If Charlie, if Peanuts the comic started, we're comic number one, comic number two, we're the creator of the comic, who decides the intent of it for the most part, if the creator of the comic started writing it as a Nazi comic, then Snoopy's a hate symbol. Then Charlie Brown is a hate symbol. Then, then their line is a hate symbol. But if it's around for five or 10 or 20 or 30 years and then a fringe element that has nothing to do with the creation of it turns it into something terrible, it doesn't mean that the original comic is hateful. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments on this about like, you're a Nazi, you're a racist, you're a right-wing nut. But you know, when people say all these things like racist, Nazi, sexist, misogynist, homophobic, and honestly, it's, it's, it's like, it, like with, with other people, you can pull that shit. But with me, it never works. And I've had these conversations in real life, and I've had these conversations with people who know me a little bit but don't know me enough to know just how stupid their accusations sound. Because when, when you shoot me with those bullets, you expect it to go through me, but it doesn't. It's, it's like Superman. It's like, you know, you know when he's like, ah, the bullets hit me. And then after a while, he's like, ah, 
oh, wait a second, I can just flick these away. And then after a while, they just start to get annoying. And then he just like, you know, like flicks them back at you and walks up to you and grabs your gun and bends it and beams it and then just leaves you for the police or whatever to have their way with you. That's kind of how those accusations work with me. I, I have a business. I have a manager who's been with me three or four years. He's born in Iraq, born in Iraq, an immigrant. And, I, and I'm happy that he's here. And you know, if, if, I, if my appendix were, uh, were exploding and there was a doctor that I don't know in the room and him there with a box cutter and a soldering iron, I would trust him to cut out my appendix before the doctor. That's how much I trust. It's like, right, my, like my right hand man, like so much success in, in my life could be, could be attributed to the fact that he exists. Uh, my lead technician in a tech company, my lead technician, a female who is an immigrant from Kazakhstan. Um, one of her, I think, yeah, I think it was one of her friends, no, her friend's friend, husband, who immigrated here from Moscow, who was gay, worked here for like, like, like six months. You, you know, those words don't work on me because, and, and that confuses people and that fucks with people because usually the people who are talking this type, of, this type of stuff, yeah, they are people where you could actually point a finger and say they're racist or they're sexist or they're this or they're that. But on me, again, you can try that stuff. I'm not, again, it works on a lot of people and it's worked for a long time. So I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to try using those words on me instead of coming at me with logic, reason, or empirical evidence. But it's not gonna go well because when you look at the facts, when you look at the reality, and when you look at, at my lifestyle and how, I, and how I've set up and run my life, it, it, it doesn't work. So I, I know I'm gonna hear a lot of that, but again, it, it just, it doesn't hold water. The way I've, like my entire business has, has just been based on, on, uh, on just facts and people. That, that really don't support that, that way of thinking. Oh. I'm all for illegal immigration. Keep in mind legal, which I get, in, in modern times, in, in modern times, I guess if you're for legal, like keyword legal immigration, that, that, you know, that makes you fascist and a Nazi and this, that, and the other. But how long is it gonna be until somebody photoshops Blackberry in an SS uniform saying something evil? Really? Like, are they gonna photoshop you in like a Jim Crow uniform or something? Okay, can you imagine? I want you to imagine if they did this to your own kitty, if they did it to your doggy, if they did it to your favorite comic character, it would be terrible. I wouldn't kill Blackberry off just because somebody photoshopped her as something not nice. Just think about it before, think about it before you jump on bandwagons and think about it before you believe all this crap you read from, from bloggers and you know, people that just, people that uh, should, should have to get a license before they call themselves a journalist. Now, a lot of the people who are responsible for having Pepe added as a hate symbol at the Anti-Defamation League and all the people who are writing these blog articles on, on why this is a great thing, that they killed the frog rather than actually addressing the root cause of the problem, they, they don't understand the culture. They weren't, again, they weren't there in the late 90s uh, to be on IRC. They weren't there in the early 2000s to be on 4chan. But above all, they weren't really privy to the shift that occurred in 2004. 2004 was when normal people started to embrace the internet in large numbers, like 2003, 2004. And addition, with this whole tra shift to Web 2.0, which was like cutting edge at the time, but now there's probably people watching this video that weren't even born when this was happening. I God, I feel old. But the, during this whole Web 2.0 thing, people started to feel okay attaching their real name to posts. They started feeling okay uh, you know, just putting personally identifying information on the internet. It wasn't weird anymore. There was a time that I remember where if you told somebody, oh yeah, I talked to this person on the internet, that they would just look at you like, oh, okay, oh, you have a friend on the internet. Oh, you talk to people on the internet. Oh, oh, that, oh that's so great. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just gonna walk over there now. Don't follow me. And it was considered a very weird thing. And back then, when people would post on the internet, often they did it under complete anonymity. And also... They, eh, you know, it, it was, there was a culture of people saying a lot of shit that they, they probably wouldn't say, they probably wouldn't do if they had their name attached to it. And 4chan is one of those last remaining bastards from that pre-Web 2.0 era that is still massively popular and, and, and uh, trending. And a lot of people in our current culture have no idea what it was like in that like 1992 through 2004 area, um, and they, they and they just don't they don't get it, and they never tried to understand it before deciding to label a JPEG as a hate symbol. They never they never decided to to ask. They never decided to knock on doors. They never decided to post anywhere. 
and get answers to questions. What they did is they just filled in the answers that were convenient to them. They filled in the answers that they thought made the most sense, that most people would just nod their head in agreement with, rather than actually try and think about what it was that was going on, but more importantly, what the future ramifications were going to be of their actions. So that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And Pepe, you're still alive in our hearts and in our memes, but without the hate.